Yes. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to yet another exclusive webinar by Clean Middle East. Uh, this webinar is being organized in association with Fine Solutions. So it's been a year since the COVID-19 pandemic was announced and the world has changed forever. Despite the vaccines being rolled out, countries are still struggling with keeping contamination numbers down. And through all this, cleaning and disinfection has started playing an even bigger role. However, the UAE uh, as a country has been at the forefront when it comes to combating the pandemic and rolling out vaccinations. Today, we explore how cleaning and hygiene has changed in the past year in the country and the evolution of products and technologies in general today. Before we proceed, let me introduce you to our panelists. We have with us Dr. Naseem Mohammad Rafi, the Director of Health and Safety at Dubai Municipality. Dr. Naseem has over 14 years of managerial skills in the field of public health and safety, occupational health and safety, crisis management, consumer product safety, and much more. She holds a PhD in public health and occupational health from UAE University and another PhD in total quality management, along with an MSc in healthcare management. She's also the recipient of many awards, including the MDIS Women Award from Dubai Quality Group in 2018. Along with her, we have Najwa Maklouf, who is the general manager at EFS Facility Services. She's a registered member of the British Psychological Society and a CIMS certified from ICSA Worldwide Cleaning Association. Najwa has 19 years of experience blended in hospitality, facilities management, and learning and development. At EFS, Najwa manages the Center of Cleaning Excellence and has represented an elemental part in EFS for more than 10 years with a verifiable track record of achievements. And finally, we have with us Saifuddin Beldi. He is the country manager UAE and Lower Gulf and Fine Solution, of Fine Solutions and the general manager of Fine Hygienic Holding. He has 14 years of experience in the cleaning and hygiene industry in various management roles. His vision for the company is for Fine Solutions to move from hygiene towards wellness in general. He is a strong believer that the region is a key player in overcoming challenges in facilities management, cleaning, and hygiene. Thank you so much for being with us today, um, Dr. Naseem, Najwa, and Sef. Um, it's a pleasure to have you all with us. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, quickly start with our first question. Um, can we start just talking about what are the current trends in cleaning and hygiene in the region? Um, if any of you would like to start first, it's perfectly fine. Good morning, Shanti. Good morning, speakers. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Najwa. Thank you for the introduction. Um, actually, when we talk about the trends in the cleaning and hygiene, we refer to the smart cleaning and robotics hygiene that are indeed the current and the future trend of the cleaning industry. People are asking about, are robots coming? Actually, they are here already. The growing wedge of robotics is currently invading every cleaning exhibition. Everybody is talking about the technological revolution that it's fast and rapidly changing the industry. Uh, just to give a quick glance about the concept of robotics, however, this will be discussed into details in our webinar today. It is the neologism of from the word collaboration and robotics that it refers to the collaboration between a frontline worker and the robot. With the extended stay of the current pandemic, there has been a rising demand to leverage technology and think about new ways of doing things. Building occupants are nowadays much concerned and anxious about the healthy cleaning of their facility, and at the same time, the unreliable chemicals than ever before. We can see now that the, the cleaning as a discipline is very well regarded compared to the time before the COVID. So this triggered that cleaning companies, there is a big need to reshape existing cleaning protocols and the way we're doing things and we are delivering the cleaning services. This is for the uh, main objective to ensure that we are using adequate tools and sustainable chemicals at the client facility. So we can assure him that we are providing a clean and safe environment. Here comes also the need to introduce creative ways for disinfection services, like the robots, for example, in the healthcare. Same as well, the drones being introduced recently for other types of facilities, mainly for buildings. So there are more smart devices as well coming around as the Internet of Things become an integral part of everyday life. 
Likewise, sensors being introduced for smart washrooms and some other sensors being introduced to detect the traffic, the footfall level of uh, within the building. So this will help us as cleaning companies to optimize our schedules and to better estimate the cleaning, uh, the manpower level within the building. This also allow more reliable data analytics and help optimizing the cleaning schedules to drive operating efficiencies as well. Innovation in the cleaning industry is actually here to stay and will keep on evolving and transforming as we walk through the journey. Shanti? Shanti, we can't hear you, but can you uh, see? Oh, God. But Nazan, uh, maybe I will follow. Uh, you know your reasoning, what you're saying. So actually, uh, um, I totally agree. And uh, uh, you know, uh, through our internal surveys and uh, studies, what we found actually in there are the key uh, four key drivers for the um, hygiene and cleaning industry. And uh, after the pandemic, actually there are main three axes that everything uh, rounds uh, about. The first one is visibility. Uh, then the frequency of cleaning. Also, uh, then uh, in my opinion, the return of sustainability. And then. Uh, as an impact, the cost uh, effectiveness of the solutions. So for example, cleaning used to be uh, a back of the house, more like after hours job. In our today's world post pandemic, people are looking for the cleaners and making sure it gives them assurance. And also the, you know, the, the, the number or the, the frequency of cleaning is much higher. And consumers, they look at it as a sign of assurance uh, uh, you know, to visit that business, that venue, and, and uh, so on. So uh, when we combine these two, and looking at actually the consumer himself, uh, it could be a shopper, it could be a user of the public transportation, it could be a visitor, a diner, or a, a, an employee at the workplace. Now to go back, uh, and that was one of the major challenges at the opening, that people that needed to get assurance, that it's safe, in this case, hygienic, disinfected, sanitized, sterilized, maybe in a few cases, to go to that venue. And when we consider how important this would fall to the businesses, we see that uh, those two points are the major changes that we've seen through the pandemic. So more cleaning, more cleaning, and it's much more visible. People are looking for cleaners and schedules and protocols. So on top of that, uh, you know, during the year of 2020, because supply chains, you know, airplanes, shipping lines were shut down, so the supply chain was very challenged. So we've seen uh, a little like a drop in the sustainability uh, of uh, cleaning and hygiene, use of much more chemicals, use of much more uh, disposable uh, items. And uh, I believe in 2021, we're seeing uh, in the past few months the reverse of that, so people are really considering their sustainability. Objects for two reasons, one of the company's businesses uh, and the regulations uh, to abide by, uh, by. And the second one is consumers also are more aware because if you are a restaurant or a mall or a hotel or even an airport, your customers are the people who are walking through your facility and people are more and more aware also about the sustainability of, of, uh, of, the, of that uh, facility. Now, if we combine all of that, so more, uh, more frequency, more uh, visibility, so investing in PPEs and so on, and also sustainability, so this is an indic a direct impact on costing. And in my opinion, one of the major drivers also is also that those costs, they have to be managed for businesses since, you know, after a pandemic, it was very challenging to go through businesses. We can have more, almost all of the all of the industries that were 
like seriously hit. So coming up with a like cost-effective solution, a smart solution, like you said, for example, about the IOTs, that's that's a major driver for the business in the future. So uh, uh, I think these will be the most uh, influences of the hygiene industry in our region and, and, and globally as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sif. Uh, you all can hear me now, right? Yes, yes, okay, we do. Thank you, some technical issue. Dr. Nassim, would you like to add to this from your experience? Um, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Shanti and my colleagues. Uh, for us, I do agree with uh, with, uh, with Najma that uh, the trend nowadays with the uh, type of the robotics that are used, uh, let's say, in, in, the, in the field of uh, uh, special disinfection that we also in Dubai Municipality used it a lot uh, during the pandemic and during the sterilization the national sterilization program that happened in, in the whole UAE, as uh, especially in, in Dubai, and as well with my colleague Sefadin when he was talking about the uh, the the, the uh, frequency of the hygiene, etc. Probably from my angle uh, or from the government angle, when we took into uh, one of the parts where uh, we in Dubai Municipality were working on uh, approving the, these type of clinic uh, cleaning and uh, the hygiene. Uh, companies, let's say, that we, we could see this or this trend as well, that there were many other uh, uh, companies that they have different activities, but during the, the during probably the last uh, a year, we could find that uh, the transfer from one activity to another and the, the new activity that they are working on, uh, even the line of the, of the manufacturing being changed to cleaning and hygiene products. So there were like lots of other type of activities that have been totally changed now. And these companies now are working on this. So this is the trend that we could see. Even the number of the companies that at the beginning, I, I do remember last year, for example, when we started the service of uh, approving uh, the, the, the cleaning and disinfection companies, we had around uh, 100, uh, 101 companies that applied at the first day. And only we approved three of them, and the other rest they were not complying. Uh, today we have over 600 companies, mashallah. So this is this means that there are lots of 600 companies that are approved uh, by by the municipality that to work on this in in uh, in, in Dubai. Uh, this, of course, just the number will show the trend uh, by itself. Correct. That's quite a huge, uh, you know, leap. And I guess uh, despite the, the the negatives of the pandemic, we've also seen that there is a huge boost in the economy in terms of the cleaning and hygiene industry because I think the services are required more. The kind of products that people are looking for has now increased to quite a limit, uh, to quite an extent, right? Yes, um, yes, I, I I do agree with you. Uh, before I answer this question, probably I need to uh, even introduce one one important system where that uh, during uh, probably this pandemic was uh, becoming even more popular to be used by by the community and also by the customers and the investors, which is the Montage system. Montage system is uh, one system that uh, all consumer products could be uh, used and uh, being registered. When we say registration, of course, it means that uh, once it's registered, uh, means that the product are complied with all the specifications and it's complied uh, and we can assure the safety of those products. So uh, we also have an application that could be used and downloaded by uh, through any of the smart devices. So Montage application now by just uh, scanning a barcode or entering the name of the product, um, you can uh, search uh, for it if the product is registered, means that it's safe to be used. Uh, the, the, the whole umbrella that we work on is the biocides, which uh, detergents, disinfectants, and many other categories are coming under this. So uh, basically within the last year, many people probably, or let's say the community members they were using, um, probably they don't, they don't know that this is part of the biocides products, but it is under the Montage system. So just by, for example, any hand sanitizer, just to take the barcode of the product and just scan it. If you uh, if you have that uh, application on your mobile phone, you may uh, find the information on that. So basically, not only that, but also to help uh, the productivity of our inspectors throughout the inspection that were happening in the whole Dubai, that they were just cross-checking through this application if the product is adjusted otherwise it will be uh, withdrawn from the market uh, we had an increase actually and in the whole uh, the number let's say of of, uh, of this uh, type of products 
uh, that being registered, uh, I think the increase was around uh, around 70 to 80 percent, comparing to 2019, that these products being changed. And I've told you earlier that the trend, uh, not only the companies of the cleaning, the practice, but also the type of the products that are also being uh, registered and being manufactured. New brands, we can see them now in the market as well. So all of these products being being uh, to, uh, uh, till now, we have over uh, 3,000 of uh, biocides, which is the sanitizers or disinfectant products that are now uh, registered in the Montegi system. As I said, specifically 86% is the increase of it, some, some numbers I'm trying to give you. Uh, over 7,000 of the products have been assessed, so we have evaluated them. Uh, that uh, the fig these figures are uh, till uh, February 2021, but uh, only uh, over 3,000 of them been uh, approved and registered. So these are some numbers. Also, uh, we have certain numbers for the consignment. So there are also products that are imported, not only manufactured in Dubai or in UAE, but also been imported uh, from uh, different countries, and we have. Uh, lots of uh, actually consignments uh, that have been inspected. So we have around during the whole pandemic in 2020, for example, we had over 41,000 uh, of uh, consignments that have been imported and uh, almost around um, 129 uh, ton, uh, thousands and tons of, uh, of, of biocides that have been also inspected there. Wow, that's that's a lot. Uh, can you, uh, Dr. Nassim, just out of curiosity, if you can give us broadly, what were the parameters you actually looked at to select these 3,000 products from the 7,000 that applied? Um, well, in fact, uh, we uh, have uh, international standard. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, of course, uh, certain parameters that are specifically for certain products. Uh, we have a uh, different type of test. We have physical testing, which we evaluate the labeling of the product itself. Yeah. Uh, so if you have any product in front of you, uh, probably I don't want to give any names, but maybe I have because now everywhere you can find any product in front of you in your bags. So uh, I'm just hiding the, the, the name of the brand. Yeah. Just for example, this is one type of the space of sanitizers. So there are certain labeling are there, if you can see it here. Uh, these are what we look into. So there are list of ingredients. There is the barcode, this is the barcode. I don't know if it's seen or not, it's, it's clear. There is the, uh, the, the volume and the weight could be there. Uh, some claims are there, for example, they say that it kills, et cetera, et cetera. So they need to make sure that if they put any claim, uh, they support uh, the, with the documents. Uh, and when we say documents, it's it's like, for example, if it's a really um, health claim, they need to support with uh, with, with supported documents uh, from uh, accredited either laboratories, etc. And not only that, we also have some other parameters like the chemical testing. It depends on the chemical that is used uh, and the claim that is on, on the on the product we request for the chemical testing as well. So everything must be very clear for, 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 the, for the public who are going to use it. Of course, there are certain other products like the business to business products that are the professional uh, use products that are not going to be used by, 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 by you and, and, and myself. It will be used by uh, professional people, yes. especially who are working on the, on, on, the, on the cleaning and hygiene. Like for example, these are the type of the products that for example, our employees uh, and workers were, were, uh, were using during the pandemic to, for the national sterilization program, the dose, how to be used, uh, uh, et cetera. Uh, and they're supposed to have like, for example, even dosing system that what, what percentage of the chemical to be used, what percentage uh, of the other, other, other maybe solvents, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Nassim. We have a lot of questions coming in from the audience, uh, but I'll, I'll address them in a couple of minutes. Um, before that, um, let's move on to the next um, uh, presentation, the uh, next question. Uh, what were the kind of... Um, what are the kind of products uh, that are available now? Uh, what are the new products that you have seen, um, Saif, you and Najwa as well, um, that you all have seen in the market? And I'm talking also about 
you know, green products like probiotic products or um, enzymatic products and things like that. If you all could all touch upon this a little. Um, would you like to start? Yes. 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 That's what start for me. Yes. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll go. Yes. So uh, actually, uh, as you said, um, and I always go uh, go back to the root channel. Uh, you know, the regulators, the authorities in the, in the UAE, in the and especially with the municipality, uh, you know, uh, and there's something very important is those for professional use because they work mainly on the professional use. So um, those protocols that were shared with the businesses, with the offices, with the industry on what to do, when, uh, and you know, the, to, to make sure that we are, we are compliant with the, those regulations also push businesses and manufacturers like us and our partners in the uh, uh, management unit companies to think about solutions. Uh, uh, first of all, I always go back to the roots because with every uh, additional uh, cleaning, additional products, higher specs, higher kill rate, and so on, there are additional costs. So yeah, we've seen many uh, uh, new developments, new products, uh, maybe still under uh, evaluation processes, but uh, what we've seen also emerging globally is uh, the long-lasting infection prevention product. So instead of, uh, uh, you know, it is infecting on a daily basis or an hourly basis in some, in some areas, and, uh, you know, high traffic areas uh, where you have to make sure that, uh, or in cinemas, for example, entertainment, or in entertainment parks, and so on. So instead of using uh, regular disinfection, which additional costs, additional operation hours, and you cannot make sure also that the process is followed 100% at the time because one human involvement, are, you know, always, always mistakes, misses, and so on. Uh, we see a, a new, you know, uh, kind of products, kind of a new category emerging, which is the long-lasting infection prevention. It's it's been used in the consumer side for some time now. And in the professional use, it's being introduced. And uh, I'm a strong believer in, in, uh, in science and uh, in technology. So uh, I'm sure this is going also to push the industry to elevate, uh, especially in uh, places like the UAE, where, you know, challenges that we have in UAE, we don't have everywhere else. Alhamdulillah, right now, maybe is one of the few countries that, uh, that you know, we still can go down and, uh, you know, there are some activities that are allowed. So uh, I believe that, yeah, from here we will launch products uh, in the industry, new protocols, new concepts that will be beneficial also for the, uh, for the world in general and for businesses, uh, whether it's a hotel or, or a mall or an airport. So, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Najwa? Um, what kind of uh, products are you all using at EFS right now? Any any kind of you know cutting edge stuff that you all are doing as well? Uh, actually, the product that we are using uh, currently it's approved. Our method uh, it was approved by Dubai municipality. We were fortunate that we got an approval and we were registered. Actually, we have um, opened. We have introduced a bio clean service. It's like a new vertical within the cleaning services. Uh, just to address the thing of the cleaning and hygiene issues amid the COVID. So we have submitted a proposal and then a full cleaning protocols with the, with the approved products being used and tools and machines. Uh, if I can name, we're using currently the Sterilox amongst the, uh, the service line while delivering the service to our client. Uh, but let just let me here uh, add one thing uh, on what Saif has mentioned about probiotics. Just to have a common understanding about what is probiotics. We all hear about the uh, dietary supplement that we take for the healthy gut as a human being. So the probiotic cleaners are some, uh, it's similar than the uh, probiotic supplement that we take uh, to ensure our uh, stomach is healthy and the good bacteria are not uh, removed. So the probiotics cleaners, actually, they use a unique combination of fermented bacteria and some essential oils. Ultimately, they create a compound known as biodetergents, which break down dirt and grounds. That's why we, we hear very often 
uh, probiotic cleaners. So it is very uh, helpful. Um, it's, it's very important to know that it might not kill all bacteria, but it's very, it provides a safe and healthy environment to our clients. So um, at the same time, if I may please share additional good practices that we have done in EFS, uh, in terms of selecting the right tools, equipment, and chemicals. So the, uh, the chemicals that we are using is lab tested. So there is like a validation, you know, from um, healthcare that this chemical is proven very effective uh, for, uh, during outbreaks. Yes. So uh, in terms of uh, the disinfection, uh, in terms of uh, how we are controlling the outbreak. So we are using as well um, kind of um, fogging machines, you know, fogger disinfection. Uh, definitely uh, there is like a work permit and everything is communicated to the client and approved ahead by our safety and by the Dubai municipality. And at the end of the day as well, we are making sure to communicate the end result with the client <clears throat> and we are at the same time monitoring the hygiene level on the given surface before and after the cleaning, just to make sure that the cleaning is effective post completion of the service. Okay. Thank you, Najwa. Uh, Dr. Nassim, um, what, what kind of products have you seen um, being introduced recently uh, because of this pandemic? Um, as my as my colleague uh, just uh, mentioned here is that uh, there are of course new technologies always coming into the products and uh, for uh, from our concern as I said is that we uh, always go back to the international standards that we always follow and the parameters that we have to register such products so uh, in case any product comes we first make sure that if it's under the scope of biocides or not. As an example, as uh, probably uh, one of my colleagues were, were talking about, is that uh, the um, there are certain products that there, uh, there is a claim of that they have a very uh, long duration of uh, of uh, that the product will be staying on the services, and uh, they are actually um, um, the the way of or, or the method of of uh, the um, product that is working on the surface is not the product itself but the type of the isolator that is used that let's let's make it i'm not sure about the audience how much they are familiar with the topic so i don't want to use very medical terminologies here so uh, what i want to say is that we first go by um, making sure that about the category of the product itself is it under the biocides or not so not necessarily that if a product is uh, somehow being manufactured in a way that it's just talking about the isolator so it's not about the cleaning and, and hygiene or disinfecting, but it's about how much probably the isolator would remain. So this may not be considered as a biocide and may not be registered with the biomissipality. So it depends on the category itself. We have seen certain of such products, but anyway, if, it, if it's still uh, the chemical testing at the certain point of time, let's say, so we have our lab as well in Dubai municipality and we also accept any uh, lab results from accredited labs of course worldwide so if there is anything being um, um, let's say uh, provided to us with the supporting documents stating that these products is still effective after a certain time with the same let's say efficacy that being claimed at the first time then, of course, these type of products will be approved. Thank you so much, Dr. Nassim. I'm just going to address a couple of questions uh, here right now. Um, uh, two people have already asked us, you spoke about the Muntaji app and software, right? So um, can a consumer, a general consumer, download the app and then just scan the barcode code on the product to know if it's approved? Yes, of course. Uh, we have, uh, uh, let me explain it one more time, that we have uh, actually uh, in Montage two, we can call it two systems. One is Montage uh, program and system that can only be used by the companies, by the people who have a trade license 
or industrial license. So it's only for our customers who are going to import the people who are interested to either manufacture these products or import it from outside. So they need to use the system, uh, upload the related documents like the MSDS, uh, some other documents, lab results, it's, uh, uh, an image or artwork of the product, of the label of the product, etc. Okay. This is not, uh, has nothing to do with the uh, public. The one that is to be used by the public is the application. So it's an application that you can download it on any smart device. Uh, we used to have the whole the, the Montage application directly. Now it's under the unified app of the municipality. You may find it there. So yes, it can be used uh, by anyone and uh, it can be used from anywhere. We have some statistics that Avantage application downloads are uh, worldwide. We can now see that, for example, how many people, let's say in USA, are scanning the barcode of some of the products to make sure that the products are uh, registered in Dubai or not. And basically, I'm sure that those people are not, not I mean, I mean, anyone can use this, even the customers, even the companies. And basically, those are, I'm sure though, those are some companies that they want to see if the products are registered so that they can just buy and import it into, into Dubai. We have uh, lots of uh, companies or people in Europe, as an example, that they are, um, uh, it's shown to us actually from the statistics that they are downloading and scanning, even we, we can see the history, how many people and how many times, and specifically even by brand name, that how many times it's been scanned for to check the, about the, the the product. So the public, yes, can download, scan the barcode. So if, uh, again, I may uh, uh, take this opportunity from this stage to ask the public that are with us or any of us, at the end of the day, we are all end users, that at any point in, in Dubai, if you could find a product when you scan the barcode and you could not find any information, there is also a button which you can report. And you may also add the location if you wish. And immediately this will be reported to us and our inspector will visit the place and take the immediate action to make sure that the non-registered products not to be available in Dubai market. Hope it's clear. I believe it's clear. I think I, but I cannot hear Shanti here. I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we lost her again. I think now Shanti has a technical issue. Technical issues always happen. So what to do? Uh, anyway, uh, till Shanti will be back. Uh, uh, I just want to also add that um, um, it's now uh, the Montage application is also under enhancement, where we are also relating it to the health authorities. So this means that in case, for example, any anyone who have used such products and they face uh, probably any side effect, etc., they also can report the side effects. So it's becoming like a whole package of surveillance system. So it's very, it will be very good that we are also monitoring uh, the, the problems that may happen by the use uh, or consumption of such products. This is under enhancement. And it will be linked also with the Dubai Health Authority, where uh, we can also monitor this with, of course, the collaboration with the physicians in the HA. Uh, Shanti, I just want to clarify one question from Paolo. Yes. Uh, definitely, this infection is not done uh, before we do the cleaning, because we strongly believe that C comes before D. So cleaning is very important and essential. Actually, here we are just trying to share some good practices about the disinfection and how we are responding to the uh, current pandemic. But we have not mentioned that we are not we are only disinfecting without making sure that the cleaning process is there at the first before applying any disinfection method or disinfectant type of product. Just to clarify if there is any uh, misunderstanding in my statement. Thank you. Thanks, Najwa. Um, Paolo, I, it is it is something that is being um, still being done by a lot of end users, but there's a lot of awareness that we're spreading um, through Clean Middle East as well, uh, through the cleaning companies, through the cleaning manufacturers with Dubai Municipality, 
all of us i think on this stage are representatives of the entire industry and uh, the yeah the work is still ongoing you know mm -hmm. awareness and educating is still ongoing and just to add shanti as well whenever we submit our uh, cleaning method and protocols to the dubai municipality we have to enclose an operating procedure about how we're doing what we're currently doing so in the procedure it's clearly stated that there are three phases which is the cleaning first then the disinfection and then checking the post effectiveness of the cleaning so it's a cycle it's an ongoing cycle you know uh, especially when it comes to the cleaning and then wh while we are talking about the pandemic so when we go to a building we need there is a difference we assess first yeah. what is the building what's the size what's the area to be cleaned what's the contaminant level as well that's why i mentioned about the scientific tool that we are using to assess the level of hygiene pre and post because we submit a, clean, uh, a completion report to our clients and this completion report template is given by the Dubai Municipality Authority as well. So we are using it as a guide, enclosed with all these uh, data, and then at the same time the, the pictures, the pre and post, and what is the um, what is the cleaning activity performed or activities performed, be it a cleaning or be it disinfection. Because sometimes we respond part as a reactive or sometimes part as a preventive. So it, it, it varies depending on the scenario. Thank you. Thank you so much, Najwa. Um, and, uh, if I may just um, want to add about, because we were talking about new products in the industry and so on. Sure. So, um, and I remember in the beginning, Najwa mentioned also about smart washroom and actually and the data analytics and so on. Now, for example, the hand sanitizer, if we talk about the hand sanitizer, is almost becoming a necessity everywhere at web. And that hand sanitizer actually can provide data of consumption details, but also can provide data for marketing. Because for businesses, I always think about, uh, as a manufacturer, we always think our customers, when they are, our customers thrive, then we thrive. So those are the, that data also is provided with footfall, peak times, how to manage, and then also can help the facility management allocate manpower and so on. Also can help the end user himself on planning for his weather marketing campaign, push on notifications, and, and so on. So there is another aspect of uh, the hygiene industry that we still don't see. Is going to be in the near future um, using IoT and sensors and so on, but also measuring uh, uh, KPIs uh, to be used in marketing campaigns, sales plans, activations, uh, and so on. That's also uh, another aspect. It's not still visible, but we already can see we've been in touch with partners and, uh, and manufacturers uh, lately uh, on, on this uh, new aspect of the business, and it's great and amazing. That, that finally hygiene is getting into the, you know, the digital marketing business. So, yeah, I just want to add to that. Thank you so much. In fact, um, something that uh, Alp has asked in the questions also comes to mind, uh, especially with regard to what Paolo is also talking about. In terms of creating awareness about these products, about the best practices, um, what kind of um, uh, efforts is Dubai municipality also putting in? Are we like you know putting in brochures or you know uh, you know on our so on, on your social media? Do we have some kind of information that is coming out? Um, Dr. Nasim, if you could tell us a little about this. Um, yeah, I could see also uh, so the, the the question. I was just reading the question from Alp as well. He would uh, he was talking about probably the claims that. Uh, some of the products, and I think a little bit probably I have already elaborated on it. Yes. So yes, um, I will go back first to your question is that, yes, of course we are using uh, specifically nowadays the social media for the awareness, but the main awareness that I want to say is that the Montage application itself. So mm -hmm. if the product is registered, because during the registration, we are going to take care of all the other uh, parameters. And one of those probably is not, uh, when we said the physical uh, testing, uh, the labeling so if there is any claim that are coming on the label we are making sure that we uh, take it very seriously we request for the supporting document like if it says for example that it will kill uh, the bacteria in let's say five minutes or whatever we do request for the supporting document we send it to the lab we request for the clinical studies to make sure that this claim is supported with the um, related uh, documents 
And this is one. The second thing is that we, we try to have like some awareness tips uh, in terms of the products uh, in the social media. Uh, we have uh, certain, um, uh, let's say, um, customer forums that we make sure that our customers, when they apply for the products, they need to know about the certain claims that could be approved and the other claims that cannot be approved, as an example. So these are the things that we try, we try our best. Um, sometimes it is a little bit uh, challenging that you go by claim by claim and tell this to the public. So the easier way is that to say that please scan the product and make sure that the product is registered with the by municipality because at the back scene we take uh, this um, uh, challenge to make sure that the product as, that is provided in the market is safe in terms of the uh, content, in terms of the claims, etc. We have certain cases where the products, when it's registered uh, with the, 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 so the let's say, um, the content of the labeling, etc., and there is no issue with the product and it is registered. But once some companies, they want to market for their products, then they use other claims that never been submitted as a document to the municipality. And we have actually uh, another service that we have uh, uh, also that that's linked to the Vantage system, which is an NOC for advertising. And now for any companies who would like to market for such products and they want to advertise, we also go for evaluating the content of the advertisement as well to make sure that it is true and there are no fake information and we are not really misleading the consumers. And I also do appreciate that uh, the companies do the same and not to really use the pandemic uh, for just a marketing, uh, let's say, line for them. Unfortunately, we could find certain products, as, as I told you about the number of the products that have been submitted, and maybe less than half of that being approved. This means that there are lots of products that they want to bring it into the market, that they don't have even the minimum uh, requirement uh, or safety requirements at all. Absolutely, very well said, uh, Dr. Nasim. Especially because we've seen that, and it is uh, something about um, you know, it is something that we are. Um, seeing in the market as a magazine as well you know we are seeing a lot of companies coming up with uh, stuff that they are marketing as part of the pandemic but you know you have to be here to stay and those who are uh, the quality people the quality products will definitely stay that's definitely what we're um, you know seeing in the past we've been seeing in the past year um just a quick question the montaji program and awareness is it only in dubai or is it in all of uae dr nasim Uh, Montage system currently belongs to Dubai municipality, so it's uh, the system itself that can be used by the customers. Uh, it is for Dubai, but any customer who has any trade license or industrial license or any type of the license, I mean, as per the, the, the activity, mm -hmm. in UAE, in any other emirate can apply for it. We have no issue with it. Our scope is Dubai as the municipality. So when we do inspect, we inspect the premises in Dubai and the, the, cost, the uh, let's say the consignments that are imported in th through Dubai ports. However, we are now currently uh, with the related uh, ministry. We are in a very, uh, let's say at the, at the last stages of, of the discussion to make uh, Mutaji as a federal system that can be used uh, by um, for the whole UAE and not only for the Dubai. Thank you, thank you so but, much. The application is can be downloaded by anyone at any location in any country. Okay, great. Um, I'm just going to go on to the last question. Uh, just a message to the audience: if you all have any questions uh, that you want to ask, this is the time to ask them. Um, the last question is, uh, of course, addressed to all of you again. How can cleaning companies, and I'm going to also um, you know, address uh, cleaning product manufacturers, how can they improve their services and products with the right knowledge um, 
in this current situation um if we can just go one by one maybe if najwa can start and then uh, you know we can end with dr naseem again um najwa can you start with this please yes. thank you actually it's important uh, to remember that the cleaning for workforce is also uh, an integral part of this evolution in the cleaning and hygiene service as an integrated leader in the fm industry we strongly believe that the training is the divergence of the knowledge so we highly invest and train our workforce to strengthen their skills and ensure they are ready to adjust in the current technological revolution in terms of new methods new ways new products new tools new scientific uh, data analytics so as the technology is rapidly changing the cleaning industry um, it's very important for us to focus on the on enhancing the performance of our cleaning workforce in order to make sure um, we are providing what we are committing to our clients which is the clean and safe environment um, to their facilities at the same time uh, one of our uh, good practices as well since we are uh, an accredited center of excellence from the ISA cleaning worldwide association so we have developed an infectious disease prevention program that supports the client in implementing um, effective measures at their facilities on how we can respond to any outbreak and at the same time how we can um, uh, apply some control measures and administrative measures in order to make sure we prevent the spread of any contamination within their facility uh thank you so much najwa self uh, anything that you would like to add especially with regard to uh the products how can you improve number one the kind of products in the market how can you improve the awareness about these products and how to use them in the right way absolutely alana uh, as uh, in principle Allah, the, the, we have the regulations that we have to comply with and then uh, we have the customers that uh, we need to work with the end user, the one who's using the product and using the services of service provider like facility management. So our role in, uh, from a manufacturing point of view and service provider is to work together to develop product that comply with the regulation to satisfy the needs of the customer and then work together with the customer and uh, create what you call awareness or create an environment that will develop uh, new habits, new standards, uh, new methods, and new KPIs to make sure that we live in a world uh, um, today of post-pandemic. So the hygiene, the safety is very is is clearly the most important, the number one uh, uh, priority for uh, for uh, any consumer of business. So in this, it's science. Uh, we have to invest in RNG, and then, but the product has to answer a need. It doesn't have to come and push uh, from uh, from outside. So what we believe in, and uh, this is something I'm strong believer in, is in our region we have challenges that we don't have in any other places in the world. And if we talk about uh, you know Mecca and Medina in Saudi Arabia or the Expo 2020 in a couple of months in the year, we have 25 million, I think 60% of the business, the, the visitors will be coming from outside uh, UAE. So these are challenges that not many countries in the world face on a daily basis. And this is pushing the industry uh, as service providers, manufacturers, and also the regulators to uh, create new standard methodologies. So uh, about awareness, now uh, on the professional side of the business, uh, almost on a monthly basis, the municipality issues um, uh, protocols for businesses uh, by channel, by vertical, what to do or what not to do, including cleaning, sanitization, disinfection, what other proof products, the list, the updates, and uh, all businesses we partner, whether it's service providers, manufacturers, even competitors, we partner in campaigns of awareness for consumers and for users and for end users to make sure that we all get out of this and thrive together out of the pandemic. Uh, it was also a great challenge because supply chains were not very uh, very friendly in, uh, in the first uh, months. Uh, it was a tough situation, but uh, Alhamdulillah, I believe as a whole, as an industry in the region, uh, 
and the results are speak for themselves. So thanks uh, everyone who contributed, also the bank municipality or even the facility managers, actually the facility management companies like KFS uh, are actually frontliners because they were also uh, you know in contact with the uh, you know the contamination, the transmission, uh, the spread. So that was a uh, no overall industry uh, result, and uh, alhamdulillah, uh, inshallah, we'll get better. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sef. Um, Dr. Nassim, um, what kind of products and what kind of services are you expecting, um, you know, to, you know, to be licensed in the ne near future? And what is the future of cleaning and hygiene right now, according to the Bi-Municipality? Um, uh, we are always open to the new technology. We can see that the industry nowadays are really, especially as uh, many of you probably know about, or uh, I think I've uh, elaborated a little bit earlier that this type of the nanotechnology products that are happening, there are certain other uh, products with the coating that we were talking about. Uh, so uh, we are also making sure that the type of the standards that, that we are working on to be always updated and we are in line with the industry. And that's why we always have uh, meetings, uh, uh, brainstorming sessions uh, with the industry, with the manufacturing companies. Uh, during the pandemic specifically, we had a very close contact with all the manufacturers in Dubai because yeah. we wanted to make sure that the stock that is available in the market of the hand sanitizers and disinfectant to be there and maintain and not to be uh, the, the level of, 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 let's say, or amount of the products available in the market not to be. And probably uh, many of you noticed that in Dubai we didn't have uh, such an issue, alhamdulillah, because we were also helping the manufacturers that we were requesting them if, if some of them they had an issue with the raw materials and as, exa as example we were making sure that during uh, the higher committee of the crisis we uh, make sure that uh, uh, they have all the facility to import the raw materials as an example so here we again i i, I go back to questions that with the industry we are in line to to find out if there are anything any new uh, further technologies that are coming into the market that we also update our our standards up to this and not to say no to everything you know so probably you can see that there are different devices machines that are used nowadays and even if we don't have such service but still we make sure that we uh, try to have a certain uh, nocs or approvals till we have a documented standard uh, for that if you allow me, there is one question on that. Uh, the probably if some of the products are uh, not too, uh, let's say, in the market, uh, hygiene products, uh, recalls, etc. So what is our action? Please, we please. have a whole DM uh, recall action where, uh, for example, during the pandemic, we had a seven, uh, the, let's say, main uh, brands that we uh, recalled. Uh, uh, as as a whole brand, because Doctor Nasim. Um, Dr. Nassim, we can't hear you. Najwa, Saif, were you able to hear her? No. no. No, right? It got cut, I think. Um, we'll, we'll wait for her to go and come back in a minute. Um, Uh, yes, Dr. Nassim, can you hear me? No. Yeah, yeah, there was some internet. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, there was an issue there. That's I, just, I, would, I, I was just adding uh, my last uh, point on the recall system that we do have this program and we do uh, test uh, and take samples from everywhere. 
from the supplier, from the, uh, the end user locations, and also um, uh, within our lab. Dr. Naseem, again, uh, there's a slight um, lag. I'm going to take you out, and if you can rejoin, if you can hear me. Um, we'll just wait for Dr. Naseem to come back. I will uh, ask her to come back. And, uh, you know, when she's back, let her, we let her complete what she was saying, and then we will conclude. So shall we address the other questions? Uh, waiting for Dr. Naseem to come back. Yeah. There aren't many questions. I think we've answered most of them. Uh, any parting lines that you, uh, Najwa and Seth, would you would like to uh, provide our audience before we uh, conclude? Uh, sure, sure. And actually, uh, in general, in general, I think uh, the most you know, the, the lessons that we learned during the pandemic, how important the supply chain, how important that. Uh, the people working with us uh, and uh, how important the partnerships that you develop uh, between the regulators, as, uh, as Dr. Nassim was saying, actually the municipality during the pandemic was very close to all the suppliers, service providers to help them uh, answer the needs of the market. And that was uh, uh, one of the key factors of uh, the results we're seeing today. Hopefully we'll continue, inshallah, but at the same uh, Phase. Now, also from uh, from our point of view, this is uh, from fine hygienic holding uh, as a whole. Our point of view is for the businesses. These businesses actually are places where people actually work, play, live, enjoy their lives. So the most important uh, thing for them is not only the hygiene, but is their wellness. So hygiene is a part of a wider uh, family or wider. A business which is the wellness, and uh, that's why uh, not only on the hygiene side, like uh, the disinfectants or the uh, sterilized tissue. Also, we were working also on uh, other uh, healthier products where uh, you know businesses actually can support or create uh, well-being uh, uh, for their consumers. And so on. And that's our direction, and that's where we believe. Uh, the future is is about the wellness of a uh, human being is actually uh, is the uh, backbone of our vision uh, for the industry. Thank you so much, Sef. Najwa, would you like to give your parting words, please? Um, it's, a, it's a great uh, discussion today, actually very fruitful. I hope everybody has benefited from it. Um, actually, since we're talking about the trend and the future of the cleaning, uh, so it's it's obvious that the data will will be the drive the main drive of the future of the cleaning. So with the introduction of lots of innovative uh, initiatives and ideas as well. So it's a very important to implement uh, the right strategies, you know, as cleaning companies and FM providers, in order to drive our um, processes and uh, approach in a more effective and efficient manner in order to make sure we achieve desired result. Uh, we actually, everybody is concerned about how long it will remain, the pandemic, to what, to what extent it will, it will stay as our guest. So I believe we have to be ready all the time. We have to ensure that our workforce is ready as well in terms of uh, digital skills, in terms of um, upskilling, as well and enhancing their knowledge in the cleaning in terms of how we utilize the chemicals, how we utilize the, the equipment and the machine in order to make sure uh, we preserve the facility of the client and then we ensure healthy and safe environments. Thank you. Thank you so much, Najwa. Um, I think Dr. Naseem is facing a couple of issues uh, in coming back. 
so uh, maybe we will con uh, you know conclude over here um let me just find out if uh, there's any possibility because there is a major internet issue at her end so give me a couple of minutes. I do apologize for this. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. I had to turn it from my mobile, so sorry for that. No just, problem. Thank you very much for everyone. Uh, I have requested Engineer Rai to write down the Montagi email. So please post all your questions and send it to Montagi at dm.gov.ae. And we will respond to your email and the questions at any time. It was very uh, great opportunity. Uh, again, to work with the uh, with the with, with the, uh, the private sector uh, to make sure that we are all in line with each other because our objective is the safety of the consumers. So that's why we are all here. Uh, and inshallah, uh, in the near future, we'll be having also some other sessions and forums, and we will be also working very closely with everyone uh, to achieve this goal. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks, Dr. Nassim. Thanks, Shanti. So it was a pleasure to share uh, all the experiences. Uh, the time. So I think uh, Shanti will be back soon. So she was about to conclude. So thanks. Thank you, everyone. And have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, everyone. All the best. Thank you. Bye-bye. <sighs>